Now, we love getting questions from our audience, so you have to keep them well, coming. Well, most of them. We, yeah, okay. <laughs> most of them are great. Yes. Right? And we take the, the, the some of the bad, too. I mean, you know yeah. what? They help frame the show. Pros so we, we appreciate it, everybody. Yeah. And, of course, you want to keep them coming. So make sure, realestatetalkshow.ca, that you submit your questions there. But there's been a few specifically that we've been getting regarding uh, multiple offers. There's still some confusion out there, Simon. Um, well, we've been getting them for years, quite frankly. But, uh, you know, I think what happens is as soon as the market picks up in the spring, the market picks up in the fall, then we're seeing the same thing uh, in the urban market. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to, to look at both sides of what's happening, like, but you know, from the seller's side. Okay. Uh, as well as from the agent's side. And, and the well, buyer's? Well, really multiple sides, the agent's side and the uh, the buyer side. Okay. So, uh, so let's, can we let's break go. this down? I mean, this is a great educational segment. So for people out there that you you may have already fallen into that, tried already a few times and you've missed out. And I think the first thing that we would say to them is don't be discouraged. You know, you try, try again. And it just means that wasn't yeah. the place. You know what? It's interesting because every jurisdiction has its own way of selling properties. It's different in Europe. It's different in Australia, for example. I know where predominantly uh, houses are sold by auction and they, they make no bones about it. It's a live auction right. with open bid. What, what, what has evolved in Ontario is what we call a closed bid process. So what does that mean? Well, in certain markets, in most of the urban markets, we have such low inventory and such high demand that you have one house for sale that's priced correctly. And at the same time, you've got seven or eight or 10 or 20 or 30 buyers that are interested in the property. So what's, ha- what's evolved is really an auction. And you can't see them though. But, you can, it's a clo- <laughs> but that's why they call it a closed bid. It's actually, it's actually more fair that way yeah. to the seller um, but at the same time, you know, it, it can be frustrating to a buyer. But, you know, we're going to dive into it from, you know, from all aspects. Okay, so where do you want to start? Is it best to start from the buyer's perspective or from the realtors or from the sellers? Where well, do you let, go? let's understand how this process evolved. Okay. okay? So um, if you go back 30, 40 years ago, we didn't have the internet and most houses were sold by open house. So it really was like winning a lottery. Hey, you happen to drive by that weekend. You happen to see the house, right? <laughs> and really at that, at that time, because I want to I want to make people understand, it's actually a better time to buy a house now because we have access to so much more information. We know exactly what the neighbor pot what the neighbor bought their house for. We mm-hmm. know we can see interior shots. We can see how long they were on the market. We can see their asking price. We can see how many days on market in this neighborhood. We now are armed with so much more information. It's almost impossible to overpay unconsciously. Okay. Now I've I've seen situations where buyers knew they were paying thirty, forty thousand dollars more for a house than the last one that sold, but it had a nicer landscaping or it had a bigger deck or something. So they overpaid knowing exactly what they were getting. And they were okay with it. And they were okay right. with it because okay. it's a knowledgeable decision. All right. Now, at the same time, there's a misconception that everything sells for over asking and that asking price is somehow the value. Yeah, people automatically think yeah. because it's a multiple offer yeah. that, you know what, it means that the property is going to sell for way more than it's worth. And the misconception is this, that every single property sells, everything sells for over asking and people are paying stupid money. It's not the case. First of all, 40% of all listings do not sell. What does that mean? It means they're overpriced. And or they're not prepared or staged or at the same level of they're not quality, ready to be in market okay. uh, relative to the other homes that sold. All right, anything can be sold. Show me a house, I can tell you how to sell it in one day, and I can tell you how to sell it in thirty days for a little bit more, and I can tell you how to list it so that it never sells. Okay, right? Because mm-hmm. th- because just because you're greedy as a seller and want more doesn't mean the buyers who are now more educated are going to give you more. Okay, so here's the typical strategy that a smart realtor would implement in cooperation with a smart seller that understands the process. So here's a t- kind of a typical scenario. Okay, house is worth six fifty. The agent meets with the client. They they pre inspect the house, make sure there's nothing wrong with the house. They stage it. They clean it up. They paint. You know, they make sure everything is ready for visitors, which okay. is what anybody would do. Mm-hmm. Property's worth six fifty, as I said. They list it for five ninety nine. It sells for six seventy because it had a nicer landscaping than the one across the street. But some people would look at that that they paid seventy thousand dollars more than the value. No, they didn't. They paid seventy thousand more than the asking price, but the asking price doesn't mean anything. They could have made it four ninety nine or three ninety nine, and they still would have ended up in the same range. In fact, they might have gotten a little bit more if they priced it a little bit lower, because more buyers. When there's more buyers, what I've seen firsthand drives the price up. 
people get emotional. Yeah. I okay. got to win this. Right. <laughs> Honey, if we don't buy this house, I'm going to kill you. Like these are the conversations we, we have, we see couples make, right? Right. We'll see a multiple offer at our office and there's, you know, 17 real estate agents with their clients in the lobby, in the boardroom two and seven and five and some in Starbucks downstairs and all of that. So it's evolved and the legislation has evolved such that realtors must disclose a couple of things. Number one, they must disclose how many offers there are. Right. They cannot disclose the, the contents of the offers because those are private to each individual mm-hmm. client. But they must disclose how many offers there are. And if the property is sold, they have to disclose which brokerage got it, which agent got it. You know, So it's, it's a fairly transparent system. Okay, and that's important, yeah. Simon, to mention because there is a process. So we're going to break it down between realtors, of course, and buyers and sellers. Let's start with the realtors since you're there already. Yeah. There is a process. It's not something that really you know, we can do as we see fit. There are rules and regulations on how we handle multiple offers. So maybe Absolutely. you can give us a breakdown so people understand. Well, first of all, as a realtor, I, when I, you know, I'm a realtor, and when I talk to my clients about selling a property, I usually explain the two ways of doing this. Either we're going to do this by, by lower lowering the price and generating a bidding war and getting multiple offers or if the val- if the property is, is worth 650 hey we can list it the traditional sense what i call it the old way list it for 689 and negotiate down mm. but the problem with that is with that scenario is if it's priced high if people are looking in in the in the bright price range you won't get as many bidders you won't really get anybody coming to the table okay so first of all as a as a realtor you have to you have to discuss the options with your clients so mm-hmm. make sure they understand the pros and cons of both all right and number two, you have to be fair and disclose registered offers to any any other agents that register prop, register offers. All right. So if um, you know I've got uh, I've got Mary Jane agent that's expressed an interest, I need to tell her when an offer has registered. That's do that's being fair. So then, Simon, if another offer, let's say, comes from myself and my client, mm-hmm. and I say I'm bringing one forward, you need to go back to that original agent to say that there is another registered offer, so that they cannot have the choice of bettering their offer. Right. Well, first of all, as the as the seller's agent, I'd be an idiot not doing that. Mm-hmm. Of course, you want to get as much money. Generate more Mm -hmm. interest. But as I understand it, the latest legislation says I only am required to update other people that have registered offers. Right. So let's flip the tables now. Let's say I'm the agent representing the buyer. Hey, your client's interested in the property. Put it on record that your client is registering an offer. You're not presenting it until next Thursday, let's say, or next Tuesday. But now you're in the There's, pool. You're now in, you're the in the funnel pool, here. And so, it costs yeah. you nothing, and you're not buying the property. You're just saying, I'm registering an yeah. offer. Just say those words. And the realtor now is and obligated now to inform you. They're required. Very good. When it comes to presenting, there is an order in which the offers are presented. It's not they just yeah. pick a bunch of them and choose which ones. Yeah. There is a systematical approach that whoever registers, it's timed stamped. So, yeah, of course, right. you know when. Some people do it in person. Some people just fax it. The point is, is that they are done in the done in order. sequence. You know, okay. we're running out of time, but I want to cover one more one more thing. All right, and that is this: if you're a buyer looking at a property, number one, ignore the asking price and research the sale prices way before it's time to submit the offer. Research the real values. Go and take two, three looks at the house. Bring in your home inspector, double check it from top to bottom. Know exactly what you're buying. Pre-approve your financing with your lender. Get a bank draft for $50,000 deposit so that when you walk in, you look serious. Bam. Firm offer. You've done your homework. (laughs) Repeat after me. Asking price is irrelevant. Yeah, okay. I see the guy in the Honda. He's not repeating himself. <laughs> but asking price is irrelevant. Look at the real market value. Yeah. Go in with a price that you're comfortable with and don't get emotional. If you lose it, you lose it. You move on move to the on. next one. Yeah. But you know you've done your homework. You put in an intelligent bid and you understand the process. Great advice for buyers out there. At the end of the day, as you're saying, be prepared. Yeah. Do all those things to be ready to buy. That's right. You're going in ready and, then, and aimed. And in this right? market, whatever you think it's worth, adding 5%, is just the way it's going to have to be. Okay. You add an extra, I mean, if it's the house of your dreams, you've been looking for six months, you have to pay an extra $25,000 on seven hundred. dollars mm. It's not a big deal. Perfect. Well, you covered it all. I mean, at the end of the day for sellers, it really is a conversation with your realtors to decide. Do you have a little time? Do you want to just price it you know, around fair market value and wait and see? Maybe you have to negotiate it down or price it lower and see if you can get more interest and more buzz, right? Absolutely. Have your home bloody well ready because a lot of people, they aren't. And you know what? If you don't, you let other people ultimately sell before you and you don't have the same impact, which is getting somebody to ultimately pay fair market value. Mm-hmm. Key thing, as you said, though, it's about fair market value, not what the asking yeah. price is. Now, we've also put together a free report mm-hmm. on how to take advantage of multiple offer situations Excellent. as a buyer, as a seller. Uh, we haven't got one yet for the agents yet, so you guys are still on your own. But for buyers and sellers, they can call our help desk 416-366-9090 or go to realestatetalkshow.ca and request the free report on understanding multiple offers in urban markets. You're so awesome, Simon. That's what my mom says. 